Hi there, I promised you I'm going to show a much easier way than to solving quadratic inequalities. In the previous video we looked at how to solve it with inspection. I didn't mention it in the previous video, but we call that method by inspection. By inspection is a little bit tedious and I actually prefer the graphical solution. So we are going to look at how to solve quadratic equations graphically. Okay, so let's go on with that. So uh, first of all, a quadratic inequality, I mean, we're solving quadratic inequalities graphically. Qu quadratic inequality can be simplified. That would be our first step, is to get it into a format of ax squared plus bx plus c is smaller than, smaller or equal to, greater than, greater or equal to zero. That would be a quadratic inequality. What I'm going to show you is how we are going to use the graph of a parabola to solve the inequality. And you're going to see it is so, so simple. Okay, let me show you. Let's assume that this was a graph. Y is equal to AX squared plus BX plus C. And we have this expression. Let's just assume for now that we have a greater, a smaller than sign. That's, that's the expression that we have. Now, ax squared plus bx plus c can now be replaced with y. Okay, so this is a graph. This is a, a, a function, okay, where we have y's and x's, and we can go and draw this parabola. And But wherever we see this expression, since it's equal to y, I can replace it with y. So this expression can just be y is less than zero okay so y is less than zero now in the Cartesian plane when we've drawn our parabola we've drawn it on a Cartesian plane now if we talk about y is less than zero then we know y is the uh, sorry the vertical axis okay and if we talk about y less than zero we're talking about the negative portion of the um, vertical axis. In other words, we're talking about this area on the Cartesian plane. Okay, so if I were to draw a parabola, so let me draw a parabola, just a random one. Here's my parabola. There's my two, you remember we call this the roots, the root and the root, or we'll call this one R1 and we'll call that root 2. Hopefully you can see now why I used R1 and R2 in the previous video. And we notice that y is smaller than 0. The portion of the graph that, that falls in this area that we've shaded is this portion of the graph. You see? That portion of my graph falls in the shaded area. And now the question is what x values will produce this portion of the graph. And we notice, well, it's the x values in between here. Those are the x values that will produce it. So these x values, when I go and read off their y values, so for example, just use a, uh, what color is going to work on there, red. Okay, let's use a red. If I used this x value right here, and I want to see what y value is associated with it, I go to the graph, and I go across, and I see that my y value is now a negative number, because it's below the x axis. So if I go to that x value, and I go to the graph, I see, oh, whoa, this takes me to the positive part of the y axis. So here, y is positive. On this side, y is negative, which means which x values will cause my y to be negative? That's the question here. So if I have ax squared plus bx plus c should be negative, I'm saying y should be negative, and I'm asking which x values will cause that y to be negative, and then you can see, oh, it's all of the x values that are greater than R1, and sorry, I shouldn't include R1 because we only smaller than zero. We don't want to be equal to zero. Equal to zero would include the x-axis. We don't want to include the x-axis. Axis. So it's smaller, it's greater than R1, 
and smaller than R2. Okay, so let me, and, and, and that's the solution. Look at that. If we had, if we asked the question which we want AX squared plus BX plus C to be greater than zero, or let's say greater and equal to, then we're asking for what values will Y be greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero, we would be talking about the upper part of the Cartesian plane. The upper part of the Cartesian plane includes these legs here, these legs here, this leg, let me change the color, this leg here, maybe that's not the ideal color, this leg here and this leg here. Now which x values will produce these two outside legs? Well, remember I want to include 0 because 0 is included. So including this one, all of the x's in the positive direction from R2. So x is larger or equal to R2. Or, okay, and we say or because they're heading in opposite directions, or this side, x is smaller than or equal to r1. Okay, so here, that's the main idea. Let me put it for you down in a few steps. The first step would be to, so, to simplify simplify the inequality simplif simplify the inequality to ax squared plus bx plus c is smaller or equal to greater equal to smaller than greater than whatever the sign was given originally we first simplify to that the second portion would be to find the roots that's all we need to do. Find the roots. In other words, you could use your formula. You can use uh, simplify, uh, 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 factorizing into two brackets. Whatever means you use, find the roots of what uh, what the solution of this would have been if I was drawing the graph. Okay, so find the roots, and let's call the roots R1 and R2. Now, thirdly, sketch. A rough a rough parabola parabola now if I mean sketch a rough parabola all you do is the following you just draw a parabola the right side uh, shape of course either like that or like this you will remember which one it has to be depending on your a value if a is positive so if a is positive or if A is negative, good, you'll have one of those two. And you don't need to draw a Cartesian plane. All you need to do is draw your x-axis. That's it. And now remember, it's going to be one of these two. It's not both. It's one of these two, depending on what your A is. And then what you are going to do in your third step is plot, sorry, fourth step, plot the roots. Okay, so just write down the roots, R1 and R2, R1 or R2. Again, you are only going to draw one of these, okay? Don't get confused because I'm doing two. You're just going to do one depending on the shape of your parabola. And next you're going to do five is select appropriate side. Okay, so in other words, if I'm greater than zero, I will select the, like the top half of my graph. If I'm smaller than zero, I'll select the bottom part of my graph. So I'm either going to look at the top half of my graph, okay, or I'm going to ha uh, select the bottom part of my graph, depending on the sign that I had. So in the beginning, I had a sign. This smaller than would mean I'm using the bottom part of below my x-axis. That's why I drew the x-axis. Okay, this would mean I'm using the top part. Smaller than would mean I'm using 
the bottom part greater than would mean I'm using the top part and it's greater than zero so please be careful if you have it in this format a x squared plus b x plus c yes we are working with a smaller than but read from the direction of your parabola the parabola is greater than zero okay so be very careful how you read it don't just go clumsily following the steps read it from uh, as a sentence the parabola is greater than zero that would mean I'm using the top part of the graph and now okay select select or highlight let's say highlight I like that word better highlight the relevant portion of the graph portion of the graph okay so if I'm using the top part I would highlight in this case I would highlight the outside legs there's the outside link legs if I using the top part for this graph I would use the um, the inside what are we going to call that the inside curve we'll use the inside curve if I was selecting the bottom part for this one I would use the inside curve if I had a positive shape if I had the negative shape and I'm using the bottom I would use the outside legs the outside legs okay and then the final step would just be the final step would just be select the solution so, I suppose not select I suppose read off read off the solution on the x-axis okay so what do I mean by that well for this first one if it if we use the top part the solution would be greater than because I'm using this upper legs th this leg is showing I'm going away from R2 in the positive direction this leg is showing I'm going away from R1 in the negative direction so this would be the select the, the solution if I had a positive parabola and I'm using the positive part of the positive parabola if I had a positive parabola and I had to be smaller than zero I would use the bottom half um, and or the inside curve and my solution would be all of this the points between R1 and R2 now the opposite is true for the opposite side parabola if I would had a negative parabola then I would uh, and I was using the top part I was greater than zero I would use the the portion that falls between my two roots as opposed to this one that used the outside the roots and if I was um, if my parabola had to be smaller than zero I would use the portions that fall uh, that's lower than R1 at, or greater than R2 just I, I had to be very careful there using my words remember th for this we use or X is smaller than R1 or X is greater than R2 be very careful when you use and it only refers to a compound inequality where they intersect okay that was a lot of explanation I'm sh and it th I've not had a single number in this whole thing except for the square of the X and the footnotes here so I'm sure you feel quite overwhelmed with all this abstract stuff so let me in the next video just do these seven steps with a few examples I look forward to seeing you there uh, and if you feel like you can do this without watching those videos that's even better so uh, but maybe I'll see you there Cheers.